So you might be wondering yourself, why is Josh reviewing Star Wars The Clone Wars? Well, that's because Season 7 came out and I've had a long stretch of time and missed out on not reviewing a lot of the new releases in the Star Wars universe like The Mandalorian Season 2, The Book of Boba Fett. Kenobi, for example, even the Bad Batch, which I really liked. So in an effort to catch up on all of that content that I've missed out on, I am going to review Season 7 of The Clone Wars, but also, seeing as I am reviewing Season 7, I might as well do the whole show. Where to start with The Clone Wars? It's uh, so expansive, and yes, it is muddled and all over the place because the seasons and episodes are released not in chronological order. They're released all out of whack. And why would anyone do this? I have no idea. But to be completely honest, it doesn't really bother me that much. I still found myself thoroughly invested in the show. And there is uh, a list in which you can watch this show in chronological order on the Disney Plus website or the Star, the official Star Wars website. So go check that out. I'll leave a link for that down below if you are interested. If you're watching this video, you've probably already seen all of Clone Wars anyway. In the unlikely case that you are watching this video and you haven't seen Clone Wars, because I know there's quite a few Star Wars fans out there that haven't, please do go check that list out. Go watch this show. So the Clone Wars technically started out as a movie and then progressed to a TV show. It was originally meant to be a TV show, but then George Lucas said, hey, let's turn it into a movie for some unknown reason. And the movie itself, I will say, is okay. I don't really like it as much as the show. The show is where it really gets good. But even then, the first couple seasons take a bit to get going. If you are watching it in chronological order, there are episodes that are really great, like the introduction of can't remember their name. Domino Squad. Domino Squad is where we get introduced to Echo, Fives, and so many great clone characters that we see progress through the rest of the show. And even though this episode does take place in season three, I mean, it's the first episode of season three, it chronologically is one of the first episodes. And it really gets you into the minds of the clones and it being called the Clone Wars you would want to do that. And everyone says that Rex is like their favorite character in the entire show. Yes, he is a great character, but Fives and Echo and the members of Domino Squad, you get introduced to them chronologically first, and then you see them, you see things happen to Domino Squad as the show goes along, and you're like, oh man, I really feel for these characters in a way that you never could have in the movies. And I've heard the excuse by so many people that they don't want to watch this show because they don't really want to invest themselves in seven seasons of a show just to validate the prequels. And in a way, this show does validate the prequels, but at the same time, it's telling its own story within the Star Wars universe. So if you want to experience more Star Wars than you ever could have with the movies... Like, if you're getting tired of the movies, it's getting repetitive, you're re-watching, like, say, episode three, and you're like, oh, I've seen this a billion times, and you haven't yet watched The Clone Wars, that's what it's there for. It's not... I personally don't think it's there to validate the prequels. I think it's just to expand on an already established universe and fill it with even more, like, really interesting characters. One of these characters, and one of the best additions this show ever gives to the... Star Wars universe is, of course, Ahsoka Tano. Where to start with Ahsoka Tano? I mean, she is the pinnacle of Star Wars. They really can do her no wrong when it comes to this show. You see her go through so many stories and have so many arcs. There are so many arcs in this show with just her that are so investing. The two that come to mind is the one where she loses her lightsaber and she goes on a mission with this really slow and really old Jedi and you you're in her shoes this Jedi is taking so freaking long to accomplish just one simple task and he's babbling on about patience 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 um, and we are in her shoes I am in her shoes I'm with her I'm like can we please speed it up there has to be a fast way to accomplish the things we need to accomplish but in retrospect 
It's a great arc for her character. Another great arc for her character is when she gets stranded on the planet. I can't remember the names for the life of me, but she gets stranded on a planet where these these lizard people are hunting her and she's palling around with three lost Jedi younglings. Dare I say that Ahsoka Tano is actually my favourite female lead in all of Star Wars. I... I love her. The show isn't always great, though. There are episodes and arcs, storylines that I just... I feel like I do actually skip every time I'm re-watching the show. One of them involves Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And a couple other storylines that involve... Or that centre on R2-D2 and C-3PO... They're not all the best, but there is this one interesting one where they get stranded on a desolate planet, and it ends with them... I, I, I don't want to spoil it, but it ends with this huge explosion that makes this really awesome sound. This conference would be boring. Even though the droid episodes are not the most compelling, that particular one, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. I actually kind of like that one. Another great part of this show is that it does center on Anakin from time to time. It being a huge show, it doesn't just have to focus on him like the prequels did. It has the freedom to focus on so many other characters like I just mentioned, like the droids or Ahsoka, but it at times does center on Anakin, and those episodes are really great. You see quite a few moments where he's starting to lose control, and you see him tip toward the dark side, and man, that shit is so awesome. I love it. To be honest, if I could, if I could, I would just watch this, and then Revenge of the Sith. Like, to me, if I'm re-watching Star Wars just, just for kicks, it would be the Clone Wars, and then Revenge of the Sith, and then that's it. The The first two don't account in my mind. But that being said, this show also brings back a fan favourite character, that being Darth Maul. Now, if you do watch Star Wars for the first time and you just start off with the Clone Wars, you won't know who the hell Darth Maul is. So, in actuality, you do have to watch the first two, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, to know what's going on. But man, when they brought Darth Maul back, I was cheering in my seat. I like It was so awesome, I have no words to describe it. It's just, you need to experience it for yourself. As you're going through the show, you know where they're leading, you know the possibilities, and then they do it, and you're like, oh my god, this guy, this guy is out to wreak havoc on the galaxy. I would call him, like, <clears throat> the Bane of Star Wars The Clone Wars. Like, he is to this show what Bane was in The Dark Knight Rises. Or the Joker, I don't really know. But <laughs> he was w so well done. And this is where I now want to get to Season 7. Because Season 7 ends with him, essentially. And what we only heard whispers about in the show Star Wars Rebels, the uh, war on Mandalore, now we actually get to see it in Season 7, and it's fucking awesome. It takes place at the same time as Revenge of the Sith. So it feels, when you're watching it, it feels like there is something darker, something more epic on the cusp happening at the same time as this story that you're witnessing. My favourite part of this whole thing is when Maul's just walking through those hallway and he's just mowing down clone troopers. Man, that was badass. I love that. <laughs> also, the moment where Ahsoka and Rex are trying to escape the ship that is being destroyed and plummeting to the planet's surface, that was an amazing scene. I love that. And all of this is done in 3D animation. Like, it's animated. But it feels so... Did I just spit everywhere? <laughs> Ew, so gross. But anyway, um, it feels so cinematic and epic. Like, in, in reality, this is a show for kids. 
Star Wars is pr- practically for kids anyway, but this show is for kids, but it's so mature that it can really service anyone who's watching it. And that is the great thing about Star Wars, The Clone Wars. And uh, before I end this review, one more thing I want to add. This show is canon. The micro-series Clone Wars, which I did watch myself, is not canon. Technically. Just so it's out there, I just wanted to put it out there. Anyway, that's my review for Star Wars The Clone Wars. I honestly could go on for a lot longer because the show is so huge that, you know, everyone has their favorite moments. It's so big, there's so much goodness in this show that you could really talk to anyone and, and ask them, what's your favorite moment? And it will be vast, it will be vastly different to what you have in mind as the show's peak. For me, the show peaks at season five. But what I love about it is that it's for everyone. Everyone has their favorite moment. It's like, it's, it's, just, it's just awesome. Go and watch it if you haven't already. So I will see you in my next Star Wars related video. So you might be, another, Great addition. Addition? No. Stories. Okay. <laughs> and I've heard that excuse, and I've heard the excuse that no one 